I know it's hard for you to imagine because you've never known anything like that. But do you know there's over 2 million cars, automobiles a day outside of factories for 8 hours while the people are at work? What if those automobiles were used by people that came out of the factory and drove them away? You'd have 10 times as many cars available all over the world. Then you have freight yards with freight trains, hoping that business would be good next month so those freight trains would be working. In a balanced, flowed economy, everything works for everybody. There's nothing sitting around. Now, when you design a factory today, the minute you build that factory, the land value goes up. So if you need spare parts, a spare parts factory will not locate near you because the land cost is too high, so they move to Hylia, Florida. And then you have to have the freight trains pick up stuff all over the country to make things. The free enterprise system is the most wasteful and destructive system ever conceived of. It's a very stupid process where some people live very well. They call it sustainability. But what you have to offer takes things away from them. So that would be unsustainable. So sustainability is a word that has really no meaning unless you define your terms. So when you speak to people, they say, I believe in a freedom society where everybody participates. Participatory democracy. So I meet an American that says, that's what I believe, participatory democracy. I said, did you vote for the space program? I said, I guess not. Did you vote for any highway design? I guess not. Did you vote for the design of the Capitol building? No, I guess not. Where the hell do you participate? You don't vote for anybody. They put the people up there for you to vote for. You don't pick the people because you don't even know there's such, such a thing as that. So the system you live under is basically the one that creates the problems. So when Obama, got, Obama became elected in the States, they figured he'd do something new. He wouldn't even make it if he was that different. He had to say things that people identified with to get in. And if you do that, you can't change people. You can only change people by offering new ideas. When Edison came out with the electric light, some of this stuff was stolen, some was original, some were made by the people that worked for him. He didn't do everything. And no invention is completely radical. And there are many people doing research on cancer. Let's say you do research on cancer, and you find out a hundred things that don't work. That's useful too. So I read this book, and two years later, I come up with a, some help for cancer, and I get a Nobel Prize. What about all the other people working on it? They work just as hard as you do. Giving a person a Nobel Prize discourages other people. You don't have to do those things. When people are properly educated, they feel good, because they can add to cancer, or add to the control of heart disease. They don't work for money. When people work for money, can you really trust them? I got just the car you're looking for. I got just the house you're looking for. All this is bullshit. And the kind of world you live in is essentially bullshit. And that's what it's made of. And there are no I want to say there's really no bad words. Maybe if this young lady baked a pie and dropped it, she might say fiddly dee. And the guy might say shit. If he drops a pie, that means he's sorry he drops a pie. That's what it means. When a guy says bullshit, it means the guy can't accept what you say. It has nothing to do with fecal matter of the bull. So, the way we use language, you know, bothers some people. I spoke at Columbia University and I used profanity, and one of the academicians said, if, if your mother were here, would you use that kind of language? So I said, Mother, will you stand up? She was there. So, uh, in other words, the word, another thing that you have to learn is that the word love is another bullshit word. When you fall in love at 15, it's different than falling in love at 20. And when you're 27, your concept of love is different again. So all of us, I'm sure all of us will agree we've done stupid things in the past. Okay, if you agree with that, if you live with a replica of yourself, how long will you be together? You understand? You're a changing organism. You're always changing. And the people think that I believe in utopia. I don't. I don't believe there's any fixed system. 
It keeps changing. Your computers don't stop at a certain time and that's it. You go on and on, they get smaller and faster and do more. <coughs> and cameras don't need film anymore. And in the future, they'll tell you a lot about the weather and everything else. So there's no final frontiers. There's no best society. There's no best laptop or camera. So children in the future will be educated to accept change, not hang on to tradition. Tradition is old systems that worked one time. So we can examine them and ask whether that system should be preserved. An elderly Jewish man came up to me one day and said, will you permit tradition in the future? I said, will you? He said, yes. I said, the Nazis meet once a month for, for 75 years. Is that okay with you? He said, no. I said, who selects what tradition? You know, your tradition, his tradition? So all of these things, Christmas is business, has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> and, and look, we don't go to other countries <laughs> to bring democracy. That's another whack of shit. We go there for their resources, their oil, their resources. And the business of armament is a real big industry, selling armament. So war is good business. I had a friend that was a pilot in World War I. He told me he flew over German munition storage systems and he was ordered not to bomb it. And he could not understand that. He thought of every reason. He said he flew over eight times Krupp munition storage works and was told not to bomb it. Uh -huh. He was so confused. When he got out of the army, World War I, there was a book called Arms and the Men. I'm sure none of you have ever even heard of it. Did everybody ever hear of the book Arms and the Men? It was pulled out of most libraries. It was written up in Fortune <coughs> magazine in America. The whole article how DuPont had shares in I.J. Farber. That's why I was ordered not to bomb it. Everybody doesn't know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay, vested interest, you know what that means? People that have invested in other countries, they don't want that country bombed. So it's very difficult to have a war that's sincere. Most wars are for profit making. In fact, I should say, all the wars that I know of are for profit making. Now, a lot of people come to me or they come to our center and they say, this is their words, not mine. Why are these goddamn North Koreans building rockets? And why is China building big armies? And why is it that we can't arm too? Well, I can tell you why, and I don't want you to take my word for it, but if you write and try to get a copy of the uh, newspaper called The Telegraph in England, U.S presented headlines and that says, U.S. intends to bomb seven cities, and it names them, nuclear, sneak attack, it was not called a sneak attack, it's called strategic strike, strike today, so it makes it safe. Anyway, U.S. intends to bomb seven cities, and it names them all, well that's why they're on there. Doesn't it occur to you that people that would get in an airplane and fly them into the train center, kill themselves? What did we do to make them that bitter against the United States? What did we do? We must have done something down the line. So in a true democracy, which has never existed anywhere in the world, your president would get up and criticize another country for an hour or an hour and a half. Then we would invite the prime minister of that country to give his point of view. Then we'd invite the Prime Minister of Sweden. He said, they're both full of shit. This is how I see it. That's a democracy. When you have every point of view, but you just got religion on Sunday, that's not a democracy. If you have comparative religion, what different people believe all over the world, that's better. But if you also have atheists, agnostics, everybody on the air, and you turn it on and off, that's a democracy. But when you've got one point of view on the air called managed news, Meaning, they're letting you hear what they think you ought to hear. Somebody's making decisions about the way you ought to think and giving you their viewpoint as a dominant viewpoint. In the future, people, children, will be educated in different cultures, different value systems, what different people believe, 
all over the world. They will travel, live with Italian families, Greek families. They can